So listen, man, I did this video and for whatever reason, the audio cut out. So this is the second time I'm telling this story. But today what we're going to be discussing is my first air quote placement, my first air quote placement, but also the story behind and around the rapper who got me that. And there will be some lessons in here. So definitely stick around and listen to the full story. So boom, we are in the SoundClick era, the peak of SoundClick. We talking Wiz Khalifa, you know, he's going crazy at the time. Dat Piff is going crazy. The SoundClick charts are looking crazy and tight beats are not even really a thing yet. And boom, I'm a SoundClick producer. So cats are not really uploading their beats on YouTube yet. So that's the era that we're in. Everything is good, everything is grand. One of the things that has always persisted since that era, that era is the era where the free downloads really started. So with that, you have to conform to what's going on. I set up my beats for free downloads with tags all over them. So with that being said, the picture is painted. I'm chilling one day. I'm chilling one day. I get a message from somebody. Long story short, the guy hits me up. He says he has me on a record with Young Jock you know, as far as like one of my beats and stuff like that. I'm like, sweet. So I wanted to hear the record, but he sent me the record. And if you know how a producer's brain works, what I was listening for was the tags because I can't recall, but I don't think this beat got purchased. So when I heard the beat, I was like, hey man, I know what beats I be sending out because they used to have to put the stuff in the PayPal bar and you know, write in what beat they want. I had to send it out manually. That's how it used to work. Shout out to my flash store. Shout out to B-Star. I was like, I don't know if this beat got bought before. So I'm listening for the tag and guess what? The tag was there, but guess what? Most people wouldn't be able to tell. They wouldn't be able to tell because the tag was a whisper. So don't make your tag a whisper because nobody's going to know it's there. and People could just rap over it. But at the same time, that's what got them to rap over the beat. Now listen, I didn't get paid, they didn't lease the beat, and it went on a mixtape. So this is another time frame that some of y'all might not be aware of the mixtape era, which is when rappers would drop songs for free on that Piff and live mixtapes and a bunch of other sites, and they get paid nothing because there was no money and streaming anything the only money there was is if you buy the actual mp4 or mp3 or whatever off itunes or amazon music or whatever digital distributor you know you decide to get the song from so these songs are not going to digital distributors and stuff like that you know a lot of people got their beats stolen in that era because of stuff like that and people rapped on them for free and stuff like that so that's what it was as far as that. But I had a record with Young Jock who was still somewhat hot at the time. So congratulations, you know, pat yourself on the back. Good job. Yeah. So boom. I look at the situation like, OK, so he got that. and He wanted to chop it up with me on the phone. And this is where the story really begins, because I begin to speak to this rapper and I learn his name. But we're going to call him because I'm not giving no clout or nothing like that. Weep him. That's what we're going to call him. We're going to call him Weep him. We're going to say that his that's his rap name because Wiz Khalifa was out at the time. And what he was doing was a lot of weed rap because Wiz Khalifa and Currency made that a popular subgenre. When I link with him, the song that we did, as far as the one that he rapped on my beat about, was Pimpin'. So as far as once I linked with him, it was an identity shift. He then became a pimp. So the weed pimp, that's what we're going to call him, the weed pimp. Now, in the initial conversation that I had with him, we chopped it up, and I'm noticing a lot of things, man. He's saying, because, well, first off, he was at Young Jock's studio, and I think he was sleeping in Young Jock's studio, and he was cool with Young Jock, all this stuff, right? Boom. So you get that out the way. The second thing is, he was a Young Money affiliate, so he says. You know, I don't have any proof of that, but he said that. And he was definitely affiliated with somebody who was, in fact, affiliated with Young Money. So that is a confirmed link. 
So I actually do believe to some extent he was affiliated with some people from Young Money and stuff like that. So this is like, I, I'm not new to the game at this point. I'm feeling like, okay, he is trying to, you know, do the status thing, like make it seem like he's a high status individual and stuff like that to get more production and stuff like that. It's something I was aware of. But regardless, I actually like the music that he made. And during that conversation, he definitely said a lot of grand things about stuff he has done, like, you know, ghostwriting and things of that nature and et cetera, et cetera. But those are the main highlights. So with that, I'm like, yo, he's in Atlanta because, you know, Young Jock is from Atlanta. So I'm like, let's connect it, blah, blah, blah. I'm all the way on the other side of the country. It don't matter where I'm at. I'm not in, not nowhere near. I'm in the Midwest. So boom. Me and him begin to chop. I begin to work with him on a basis to where I'm the producer, you the artist, you make the music, I make the beats. And I wasn't the only producer he was working with. But this is good because Buddy had motion. Him getting me a Young Jock song, that automatically is motion right there. So boom. And he is getting videos done and stuff. So I'm like, boom, this is a good cat to be working with. So we working, we working, we working. Now, this is when the issues start. I'm going to tell you a few stories. We had a good working relationship. We had a good working relationship. We definitely talked and got more personal and stuff like that. Talking about life and things of that nature. There are a lot of details that I will not put in the video. He's in a situation. Financial situation. He is about to get evicted or he has to pay rent, something along those lines. I cannot remember exactly. But by the end of the day, he needed some bread. It might have been $50, might have been 100 I looked at it like, he my dog. This is my dog. We done bonded. We be working. So I'm like, bro, I'm going to get you the money. He needed me to go to Bank of America. I couldn't get to Bank of America because we don't got one out this way, man. I sent it through Western Union. He wasn't going to be able to get it same day. So, you know, it, it, it really blew his shit. But it is what it is, man. I sent the bread, man. I don't remember how the situation panned out. I think he got a new place and everything was Gucci some months later and stuff like that. But this is where things got really crazy. Me, him, and another producer or two, we like two or three mixtapes deep at this point. Like, we really working. We really grinding, et cetera, et cetera. I remember one of the things he said is if he don't make it by 25, he was done with this shit. And I'm not going to lie. I was probably like 24 when he said that. And I was like, <laughs> the way that I feel is like, I don't really like, bro, I'm going to make music regardless because this is what I love to do. This is not something. Yeah, we don't got to get that deep, bro. But listen, one day, and this is probably, I, we probably was working together for two years or something like that. I can't even remember, bro. But listen, one day he hits my line, right? I'm like, yo, what's good? He like, yo, bruh, I'm on the way to the studio, bruh. Guess who just hit me up? I'm like, who? Gucci Mane, dog. Gucci Mane hit me up. Hottest dude in Atlanta at the time, bruh. You know Gucci is a legend, but we talking about, like, somewhere between 20, 2011 and 2014. Somewhere between those years. And I'm like, where, where did he hit you up? How did he hit you up? Like, what, what happened? You're like, oh, bro, I was on Twitter. And when I was on Twitter, bro, he, he tweeted me like, yo, I like what you got going on, we pimp. And then after that, I followed him because I wasn't following him. And then he deleted the one tweet and started DMing me. He said, yo, we need to get in the studio today. I'm available. He said, oh, word. All right, we could go to the studio. And then Gucci sent a message like, yo, if you got the $50 for the session, yeah, I'll slide through. We could do an hour and I'll knock out a verse for you. We'll do a song together, da, 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 all this stuff. It might even go on my mixtape. Da, 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 da. I all like, listen, let me, let me remind you, this dude, I've given him money because of his living situation before. I know he be going through struggles. Remember I told you when I first started talking to him, he was sleeping on Young Jock couch and stuff like that in the studio, so he's getting it in. And I just disregarded all that because I'm like, you know, he a cool dude and he made good music and we could work and we could elevate, build all this stuff. 
But at this moment, I was like, okay, there's a shift here. He's trying to play me. Because sure enough, after that, what happened? Maybe Bart went out to the mall. He asked me if I could let him borrow $50 for the session. So I'm not gonna lie to you. I was a bit insulted and a bit mad when this happened because I got finesse stories that I'm gonna tell that I haven't told yet that happened before this. So it's like, oh, no, nah, he trying to finesse. This is crazy. He trying to bamboozle somebody that ain't do nothing but good for him. I don't like that. Because the last time he asked for some bread, I gave it to him, you know. And there's probably other times in between that. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But listen, it, it probably wasn't. But this right here rubbed me the wrong way because he used a lie to try and get the bread. Now, this was the thing. The my, the, he, my dog shit, that went out the window because I'm like, he trying to finesse me. And I'm like, listen, I looked at Gucci Twitter while we was on the phone. It's no tweets. I could have pressed him and asked him like, yo, could you send me at least a screenshot of the DM? This cat ain't had no proof. And all I was thinking was, listen, I'm not about to give him this 50. But there is a 0.001% chance this is real. And I don't want to, you know, throw away two, three years of work as far as this relationship over $50. So what did I do? I said, listen, bro, you know, I'll be working. You know, I'm like not no rich dude or nothing like that. So I could give you 30. You're going to have to do whatever you got to do for the other 20. Figure that out. He said, word, bet. Shot him that money. Shot him to $30. One day passes. Two days pass. Three days pass. Two weeks pass. I'm like, yo, bruh. Where is the song at? I hit this cat up like over a week later. I don't think I got no response. And then, because we talked a lot on the phone. He hit me up via text or he hit me on Twitter. Whatever he said... I said, bruh, when you see this tweet, hit my line or give me your number or whatever the case may be, as far as your new number, whatever the case may be. But he never replied to me. We never got on the phone and chopped because what I was going to ask is like, bruh, what happened with that Gucci song? He was probably going to lie. And I was going to call him out on a lie. And after that, that's pretty much it. I just got finesse not only out of the placement beat with Young Jock and didn't get paid or nothing like that because it was the early 2010s and that's just how shit worked as far as mixtapes. But I also got finessed out of $30 for a studio session that was never gonna happen in the first place. So with that being said, to let you know the aftermath of that story, you see me on YouTube and all of that stuff and then I actually got another placement that I'll talk about another day, a legit placement. But as far as, you know, weed pimp, dude didn't stop rapping at 25. I don't think he rapped no more. He completely off the radar, but his identity switched again. His identity switched to something emo or something along those lines. And he also found another rapper to latch on to. And that was the last I heard of him, and I haven't heard from him ever again, and I'm actually cool never hearing from him for the rest of my life. If I could give you a lesson from this, it would be character assessment. You have to assess the people that you work with and keep it business with some of them, and some of them you could actually personally get to know and open that door and build that relationship and that bond, but everybody that you work with don't need to have that type of relationship with you, just keeping it real. And listen, one day I may talk to y'all about this, but this is why I don't be working with rappers. What? That's all I'm gonna say. Let me know your thoughts. If you haven't put a like on the video, please do that. And if you are new here, subscribe. More tutorials, more beat making videos, all that good stuff. I'll see y'all another day somehow, some way I'm out.